October 15, 1979, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Respected concert pianist Luli Oswald is driving at night with a friend down a coastal highway 30 miles north of Rio. Suddenly, several hundred yards offshore, she sees UFOs launch out of the water. They saw a UFO and underwent what uh, the UFO community would say is almost like a classic uh, missing time alien abduction encounter. Luli and her friend later described seeing a black UFO darker than the sky with a domed top that is more than 300 meters across. Two smaller UFOs chase their car. Luli and her friend panic, but the next instant find themselves driving safely down the road again. All is normal, except for one thing. It's three hours later. Investigators soon discover other UFO encounters have been reported on the same stretch of lonely highway. But Luli's nightmare does not fully begin until she undergoes hypnosis. She asks one of the beings where they come from, and he describes a tunnel connecting to a portal under Antarctica. And this was one of the upshots of the Luli Oswald case, that actually there are, I suppose, what you would call portals gateways, perhaps, to other locations, other dimensions, and that those portals are hidden out of our sight by virtue of being in our oceans. Some people believe that other dimensions are all around us and that within them, laws of physics totally different to our own may apply. The universe is such an infinite place that light from the stars we see at night, stars in our own galaxy, takes hundreds of years to reach us. And there are hundreds of billions of galaxies in the universe. Within the universe, Earth is like a grain of sand in the Sahara. So, if extraterrestrials have visited here, how did they find us? Where did they come from? And how did they cross such an unfathomable distance? One of the popular theories is a wormhole or a portal that an alien civilization could travel to. Instead of point A and point B having a straight line to connect them, that you, in essence, will morph space and time and bring those points together. But recently, NASA discovered that a portal may not be just the cornerstone of science fiction. NASA's Themis spacecraft is designed to detect electromagnetic fields that interact with the Earth, fields that create the aurora borealis. But instead, it found something remarkable. Their Themis spacecraft has located portals in the Earth's uh, magnetic field, which they call X points. Particles will actually spill out from one side of the sun uh, go through where the bridge of or the barricade of the two magnetic fields joined together will go through that and actually have quite a bit of effect here on the planet Earth where uh, extreme light shows of the aurora borealis will uh, light up our, our atmosphere. They are from a, an undeniable scientific mainstream point of view uh, a way in which uh, from the sun's magnetic field to the Earth's magnetic field, there is this flow. Imagine a canoeist on, on a lake. Now, that canoeist will have to paddle. But now imagine that same canoeist on a fast-flowing river. You know, they, they actually don't have to do anything. They just go with the flow. That is maybe how extraterrestrials are using the natural phenomena that we find in the universe to travel. Many experts believe NASA's Themis spacecraft may have discovered the genesis of how portals come to be. And it may be the key to extraterrestrial technology. We're on the cusp of understanding these little hidden discoveries in the universe that maybe one day we'll understand. There's a portal between point A and point B that instead of creating that straight line and traversing it over 100,000 years, that you can travel through a doorway and get there in a day and a half. Our limited understanding of the physical universe may be the only thing preventing us from navigating the galaxy. 
But when the time does come for humans to travel well beyond the moon, like all explorers, we will need a map. Whether you are human or whether you're alien, if you want to get from A to B, you need a map. September 19th, 1961, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Betty and Barney Hill are driving a rural stretch of New Hampshire highway when they claim 11 humanoid creatures from a UFO abduct them. And one of these aliens allegedly shows Betty a map. When Betty Hill underwent hypnotic regression, one of the things that she recalled was being showed what she could only really describe as a star map. As she drew this star map for quite a long time, no one really knew exactly what she drew. The extraterrestrial apparently explained to her, this is planet Earth, and this is our world, and these lines between the various dots are effectively the routes by which they travel. It's an astounding claim. Can this map actually be the location of an alien civilization? Years later, an amateur astronomer decided to find out. Marjorie Fish, a teacher with an astronomy background, was able to look at the star map and realized it was accurate. But the most amazing thing was it wasn't accurate from the viewpoint of Earth. It was accurate from the stars out there. The alien map allegedly depicts routes between two star systems many light years apart. They were able to determine it was the Zeta Reticuli star system. But her star map was actually reversed. It was the view of the Zeta Reticuli star system from the outside looking in. That's an amazing discovery to make. It's around 36, 37 light years from the Earth. So in, in galactic terms, it's right on our doorstep, which makes it a prime candidate for uh, where a civilization might be located. There are millions and millions of stars that are out there. This could have been anywhere. If the Hills map is true, what kind of technology would allow a civilization the ability of interstellar travel after years of investigation, an employee from NASA writes a groundbreaking book on UFO propulsion technology. Paul Hill's book, Unconventional Flying Objects, uh, was one of the only, if not the only, UFO book not to say, what are UFOs? Uh, who are they? What do they want? But to ask that critical question that a scientist would ask. How do they work? How do they fly? Paul Hill was one of the leading aerodynamicists that worked for NASA and its precursor agency, NACA. And Paul had an extreme interest in UFOs because he actually saw a couple himself. He reported them while the military was doing their investigation called Project Blue Book. And Paul Hill put together a theory which he said, unlike science fiction, doesn't need any uh, breakthrough physics. It doesn't need any leap of faith. It works with the laws of physics as they are, as we understand them. After studying many disc-shaped UFO encounters, Paul Hill's theory on UFO propulsion is that the UFOs are able to generate a force field around them that isolates them from the environment. The force field decreases the force of gravity pulling on the UFO and therefore the resistance. It is effectively a sort of uh, repulsive force. In other words, the sorts of things would, that would slow down a conventional object, like an aircraft or, or one of our own spacecraft, would be the weight, the mass, uh, the air resistance. What you would need to do is shield your object, your UFO, from these external forces so you would need that shielding, and you would also need a repulsive force. That craft could achieve those great speeds because the internal environment around the craft was much different than what was outside that bubble. And it would be able to fly through the stars uh, at great speed and at great levels and to travel those light years, thousands of light years that it needed to go from point A to point B. 
close encounters and scientific investigation offer a possible glimpse into the secrets of extraterrestrial interstellar flights. And all roads lead to one important concept, anti-gravity propulsion. It seems clear that science is beginning to look seriously at the idea of exotic energy sources, exotic propulsion systems, rotating disks, and anti-gravity. These are the first steps in taking humanity out of the cosmos. The theory is, is that they could potentially unlock those secrets of the cosmos, figure out how to do 100,000 light years of travel in a very short amount of time, where, yeah, you and I can't understand that. But an alien race who had a million year head start on us, that's child's play. Is the future of interstellar flight within our grasp? And if so, what does that say about our place in the galaxy? The human race needs to go to the stars if we're to evolve and survive. And we can't do that without interstellar travel, viable interstellar, faster than light travel. If someone can give us that, if we can trade that, the value of that, we are talking nothing less than the survival of the human race itself. And those are high stakes. It is inevitable that one day the human race will step foot on another planet and there will be some other intelligent civilization to greet us. The human race then becomes that extraterrestrial entity that is setting foot on an alien planet to us, but a home to someone else. It's inevitable when it'll happen. This is Unsealed. Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. We're watching this 